Hello, my name is Chrissy Hodges and I am here today doing a live video on Facebook and we'll post later to YouTube talking about OCD, pure OCD, um, and the theme that revolves around the fear of suicide, suicidal thoughts. Now, as we all know, the themes don't matter when it comes to OCD, right? And sometimes even clinicians and um, therapists want to stay away from focusing um, on just one theme because we can get so preoccupied with the actual theme that we lose sight that this is OCD. And But the reason why I like doing these types of videos is because sometimes it can feel really alone when you are s suffering with a specific theme and you are unable to find someone that understands it or gets it. And some of the little things that, not little, but <laughs> the things that go along with the different things like um, when there's violent intrusive thoughts, you can have urges and you know, when there's sexual intrusive thoughts or even violent, you can have the groinal. Oftentimes if you, you aren't able to identify that those are symptoms with the particular thing that you have, you can feel really lonely and isolated and loss of hope. So I like to talk about the different themes for that reason and that, that reason only. However, with that said, OCD is just OCD. So, um, if you don't know who I am, um, I'm Christy Hodges, advocate for um, pure OCD, which is the nickname for the type of OCD that usually has violent, sexual, blasphemous, intrusive thoughts, and mental rituals. So oftentimes someone could be suffering 24 seven right beside you and you wouldn't even know it because rumination is going on and everything else. Uh, but this is a whole, this is again, just OCD, uh, very, very common, very, very treatable. I'm also the author of Pure OCD, yay, The Invisible Side of Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. I do consultations for referrals for OCD therapists worldwide and peer support to help normalize what you're experiencing, to help you feel less alone, and also um, to uh, normalize the emotional turmoil that OCD puts us all through, right? Um, this is an interesting theme of OCD and one that I've wanted to talk about for a while, but and have been asked to talk about, just to talk about some of the realities of what it is. Um, it, it, not that I've put it off, but maybe a little. <laughs> My story in, in regards to living with OCD involves a suicide attempt. So I do have people that wait to reach out when they need peer support or when they want to do consultations out of fear of talking to me and hearing my story and being able to find something about it that they identify with um, and think, oh my gosh, but she ended up attempting suicide. So does that mean that because my story uh, mirrors hers that maybe I will and maybe I'll be successful or they may meet me and, and hear something about me that makes them feel like they're identifying and does that mean if she attempted suicide, then I will. So it isn't that I was avoiding in an OCD way. <laughs> But it is a sensitive topic, and especially because I have experienced it, and I wanted to make sure that I just felt really confident about doing this video before. Um, and a lot of the reasons, too, is because I know what it is like to feel or to be suicidal. And um, I don't want to, in any way, shape, or form, give you reassurance um, or try to put anything out there that is comparative in nature from the fear of suicide and actually being suicidal. Um, so we are for all purposes, going to keep this strictly about when you have suicidal themed OCD. I'm not going to talk at all about what it is like to be suicidal. And to be honest with you, if that's something that is part of your compulsions and you're watching videos that's saying like, oh, well, this is what it's like to be suicidal versus have, a, you know, th this is not going to help you. This is it's not going to help. You know, because all that does is drive the compulsion deeper of you trying to compare, okay, well, if someone's suicidal, then they feel like this, but do I feel like this? And as we all know, OCD is such a shape shifter <laughs> that, it, that it can mimic whatever it is that we feel like we're safe in, in the compulsions. And then all of a sudden you're thrown into a whole other wormhole down here that you have to work your way out of. So... With that said, let's talk about what the fear of suicide looks like. Now, for people, if you're listening and you don't have OCD, you may think, the hell does that mean? Like, either you're suicidal or you're not, right? Well, 
Yes, technically, but wrong when it comes to being baited by a fear in your brain and then, all, and then engaging in compulsions to try to figure out whether you are or not. The simplest explanation is this. A person with OCD that is, um, has a fear of flooding the house, okay? This is a fear that is instilled in them and they are standing in front of a sink and they see it, they're turning it off, they're tightening it off so it won't drip and, and fill up the sink and flood the house while they're gone. They can logically see that it's off but cannot believe that it's off. So it's the, well, I need to check one more time. I need to check again. I need to, ch I, I see that it's off and I know this is stupid, but I just can't stop. So if you apply that to something like this, you can see that that makes sense. It's the, well, I don't think I'm suicidal and I don't feel suicidal, but what if I am because I had the thoughts? That's where things get tricky for us because we give meaning to thoughts. And then when we give meaning to them, then we try to solve them with logic over here. And then OCD, of course, is like, mm, get out of here, logic. I want to keep you stuck in the fear. And so the bottom line is, is that having thoughts about suicide or even just, you know, fleeting thoughts as in, oh, my dog is walking by, by the way. So if you hear, okay, or if he snorts or something, it's just him. <laughs> um, most people. Most people have either thoughts about suicide or just have some fleeting random thought about, you know, what if I'm driving along and there's a cliff and I just turn the car and fly off the cliff. Now, does that mean that someone's suicidal? You know, probably not. It just is a fleeting, intrusive, weird, unwanted thought. So when someone is prone to or is living with OCD and they have this thought and it latches on of the why did I have that thought? Here we go into that horribly tormenting cycle of why did I have the thought? What does that mean? And how do I, how can I make sure that I don't act on it? You know, and that's the torture of it. How do I figure out if that means something and how do I keep myself safe from acting on it? These are two hugely tormenting factors of this particular thing, which by the way, it is just not just because um, it's horrible. So I'm not just saying, oh, it's just this, but <laughs> it is harm things, which, it, but the harm is directed at yourself. And so let me get into a couple of the things uh, that, that can, you know, keep the cycle going for somebody who is living with this. So first of all, just what if having the thoughts means that I am? So trying to figure out when what I just mentioned is, okay, I had the thoughts. Well, why would I have the thoughts if I wasn't suicidal? And how does this and this and this? And so then that's when, okay, well, let me go to Google. <laughs> this is what, don't, I'm not saying go to Google. I'm saying this is what someone would do. Well, let me go to Google and see if I can figure out what it means to be suicidal and see if any of those things are matching what I'm feeling. Well, yeah, you're going to find things that match. You're going to find things that don't, and you're still going to be in disarray and chaos and distress. Correct. That's what. That's why Google is not your friend. You know, we think it's our friend in the moment, and then it turns out to be, you know, Satan. <laughs> After about five minutes, you could have four minutes and fifty nine seconds of awesomeness on Google, and then one second of, why did I do that? Why did Why did I do that? And then you're stuck <laughs> for a week. And by the way, yes, I'm talking about myself, which I've done recently. I actually stopped myself before four minutes and 59 seconds. I went into about a minute and a half and I was like, what are you doing? And I slammed it. I slammed it down and, and I have not gone back yet. So um, <laughs> that doesn't mean that the temptation isn't still there. So um, with that said, um, oftentimes when people have harm intrusive thoughts, and I have other videos about this, they can feel feel this urge okay so for those of you that are listening and you don't have OCD and you might think like but if you have an urge doesn't that mean that it's real well here's the thing the brain can manifest so much if you are focusing on it a hundred percent it can make things feel real it can make all this stuff happen and one of those things when it comes to violent intrusive thoughts is if I am standing and all of a sudden it's on my radar that there is a knife sitting next to me and I am looking at that knife and going, oh my goodness, what if I pick it up? What if I pick it up and you're worried? I'm so scared. What if I lose control and snap and grab it and hurt myself or hurt someone else? 
you actually are focusing on it so much your body might feel like it's going to lose control. This is what we call, as sufferers of OCD, having an urge. Now, people are terrified that because they, again, here we go again, right down the same cycle. Because I have the urge, that must mean this, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's easy to, it's easy to think that that is a logical explanation. But remember, OCD doesn't go off of logic. So <laughs> anytime we're trying to solve or look for meaning or this is why this happened or, but it happened before, so it must mean this. And this person said this and this is logic and, and you've got to take that and just put it over here because logic doesn't apply and in fact logic is going to push you a lot deeper down into those wormholes. Um, so when people start to get these and feel these urges it terrifies them which leads to the next thoughts of oh my gosh if I'm having the urges that must mean there's some truth to it and what if I lose control and snap and do something because then I won't have control and then all of a sudden something random takes over my brain and then I won't have control and I'll do something and then I'll come back to and this horrible thing has happened right so this is all this progression that can happen as you're engaging in compulsions of the one fear of what if I snap and hurt myself or you know what if I am suicidal so having this is all common However, continuing the cycle by engaging in the what does this mean, what if this, what if that, you know, any, any sort of compulsions is just going to make it worse. Again, you can't prove or disprove anything when it comes to thoughts. You're assigning meaning to thoughts, but there is no resolution you're going to come up with in your mind. If these thoughts are coming from your alarm system, which is broken in your brain, and so by, by engaging any of this stuff, even though it feels awful and we hate it and we don't want it by engaging, which feels natural because it feels unsafe to not do anything, right? That's the thing about violent intrusive thoughts. It feels unsafe to not act, meaning act on the compulsions of, oh my gosh, well, I need to figure this out right now or else. When it, anytime you're saying or else, there's an urgency, which, you know, I don't want to give reassurance, but <laughs> probably means somewhere it's OCD, like pushing for you to act right then. Correct? So anytime there's that urgency, that's for me. Okay. I can only talk about me and my own recovery that when the urgency hits, the, I need to go Google right now. I need to sit and ruminate and figure this out right now. I need to mentally review right now. When that urgency hits, that's when I go, okay, I recognize this pattern. I recognize the pattern. I don't always say, oh, look, OCD, because that can become compulsive as well. But I recognize that pattern and I think to myself, okay, well, I don't have to engage in the compulsions now. It is going to suck and it doesn't feel good. You know, you want to do what feels like, oh, it's going to keep me safe right now. But that get, keeps you deeper in the hole, especially when it comes to things like the violent intrusive thoughts where you think you're, something is going to happen to yourself or somebody else. Um, so you can learn those patterns of behavior by working with a therapist who's trained to treat OCD. They will teach you how to change the behavior after you recognize that these, this is OCD. So. Sorry, I went a little bit off on the treatment aspect of it, but not because I don't treat OCD, but how I manage it in regards to having treatment. So let me get back on track. Um, so we've discussed the, well, I have the thoughts of hurting myself, so that must mean they're true, or oh my gosh, I'm having urges, so that must mean that it's true, or I'm capable of it, or I need to prove or disprove that I'm, well, here's another thing that people who are fearful of of whether or not they are suicidal or not the fear of being depressed so oftentimes we will read you know when we read about suicide which meant you were googling about it <laughs> um, when you're reading about suicide it, you will often hear individuals who become depressed and experience depression long term yada 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 um, suicide becomes part of that depression I, I'm, I'm seriously not like quoting wiki or anything. I'm just, I'm just telling you what you're probably going to read. Oftentimes when you're reading about suicide, depression is going to be attached somewhere in there, right? And so that becomes a huge focus for individuals living with suicidal themed OCD of, oh my goodness, well, 
am I depressed and have I been depressed and what does it feel like to be depressed? So there we go. There's a whole other layer that you can go Google, right? That you shouldn't. <laughs> You know, people will go and start Googling depression and it's, you see all the symptoms and you're like, well, I think I fit that. And I think that, well, I think that I might, and you know, I am tired and I am this and I am that. And again, the brain is so powerful and the OCD brain is so manipulative <laughs> and it will gaslight the shit out of you <laughs> to think that whatever you read is really happening to you when it's really not, but you're actually manifesting it because, but you are buying into what you're reading to perpetuate the cycle. So <laughs> this is often a huge trap that people fall into the, well, I need to figure out if I'm depressed. And then there's the well, I, I need to go get help or I need to see if I'm diagnosed with depression. And then, oh, if a therapist that you go to is not an OCD specialist, does not recognize this, they may listen to the language and think, oh, maybe they are depressed or they are suicide. So let's get on any depressants. Oh, man, this, this opens up layer number three for Googling, which is, oh, my goodness, people who get on antidepressants. They can be suicidal. It can increase suicidality. So I'm not getting on it, which is, you know, if you weren't supposed to be on it in the first place, could be a good thing. But remember, I'm not saying that it is or isn't. But that adds a whole other layer of thinking to yourself, but what if I'm depressed and I can't be on antidepressants because the antidepressants make me suicidal. So if you're listening to all this, I think that you can hear what I'm saying. It is the never ending questioning of, keeping yourself safe from hurting yourself when in reality getting the right treatment getting the right therapy is going to help you manage OCD not manage the fear of being suicidal and so there's so many avenues that this can go down and then and then and then not to mention the triggering aspects of this of it always hurts my heart thinking about all the people that suffer when we get the, you know, the rash of news stories or even, you know, high profile news stories of suicide. Because, you, you know, it's, if you're having this theme, if you're having any theme for OCD, it's always on your radar. So anything you hear in a news story or anything you see on TV or, or whatever, social media, but whenever you, whenever there's this, you know, the high profile suicides, my heart just breaks because I know that what happens is people who have this fear are going to go on. And this is, this is another part of it. It's, I need to find out everything about what this person was going through so I can make sure that I can't see my story in theirs. And that, that also becomes compulsive. It's the, I need to identify how I am different from people who've actually attempted or have died by suicide. This, this again, opens up a doorway for so much compulsive behavior. When in, in the realities of living with OCD and being in recovery from this type of theme, it is the, you know, trying to look at it as, you know, maybe I am, maybe I'm not, you know, but I'm not going to engage in the compulsions that are associated with this thought. Now, with that said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and be like, it's so easy. Just do that. I know, I know, I know how hard this is. I know how hard it is to resist the urges, uh, you know, that not the, not the, the violent urges. That's not what I mean, but like the urges to want to do the compulsions, to be able to make sure that I need to prove or disprove. It's so hard to resist that. I get it. But the thing is, is that you don't have to suffer because OCD is treatable. Now, with this particular theme of OCD, I also want to say it is really important that you make sure to see a therapist that understands OCD. Because the last thing that you need if you are suffering with this theme is to go to somebody who doesn't understand it and all of a sudden they are alarmed and alarming you, right? So, a therapist who is able to understand and distinguish between anxiety, an anxiety disorder, and how anxiety can drive that versus actually having the symptoms and needing treatment ASAP. I know that probably just triggered some of you who have this theme, but I'm just, 
I just want to drive that home because in your mind you're going to be going, but what if I don't know if I need treatment ASAP? I mean, what if I do go to an OC therapist and they don't take me seriously and I just, okay, so I know, <laughs> trust me, I know how the brain is probably going off right now. But at the same time, this is what I like to say. Is it really going to hurt to see an OCD therapist or talk to someone who has OCD or who can treat OCD um, just to see, just to see what they say. Is it really going to hurt? Because chances are it, it's, it's like taking the risk that what if you found someone and they are able to treat you and they are able to help you manage this, right? So with that said, I want to go into um, just quickly before I, uh, before I finish up, um, I understand some of the things that living with the fear of suicide and um, the suicidal thoughts, you can often feel unsafe alone. It's the fear you don't want to be alone because what if I snap? What if this? What if I hurt myself? What if that? Um, and then also, you know, just the desperate need to get reassurance from other people of do you, do you think that this is do you think that I'm going to do this? Do you think these fears are real? What do you think I should do? What do you think this or that? I realize all of this. And, and again, I just want to emphasize to you, I know how real all this feels. So, you know, I can, I can sit here, uh, uh, you know, staring at the camera and I am not bullshitting you that I, <laughs> I understand how real this feels. I understand that in the moment, that desperation overrides almost everything because of the sheer terror and fear of the what if that you've been protecting yourself against for however long, okay? All of the fears that accompany that of the what if I go to the wrong therapist and then I do snap and I do this and what if that and what if this. Well, I'm going to just pose one more question. What if this actually is OCD? What if that and what if you can get help and what if you can turn this around and learn to manage this? And you know what? I always have to tell myself that when I'm triggered with something because my brain goes wild. My, and <laughs> I say this often. I, I still don't believe that I have OCD at times. I'm like, oh my God, this is real this time. It's not OCD. I mean, every time it's it, because it feels so real. So it doesn't feel like it actually could be an illness, right? But I always tell myself and kind of what is the deciding factor in me deciding to set up my own ERP because I've already had therapy with a specialist is, but what if it is OCD? And what if just by seeking out treatment or medication or both can help? Is that what if that is a possibility too and that is my hope for you and um, that is my hope that at some point in your wherever you are in your journey with OCD that you will be able to kind of like blind faith accept that because as we know the overpowering fear of what if this isn't OCD and this is real it, it can be just as bad as the actual obsession so and my hope is, is that this video is able to bring some sort of hope and normalization that if you are having that fear, you are not alone. Trust me, you are not alone. I hear this. I mean, it's, you know, I've said this before in videos. I'll say it again. Like we spend a hundred percent of the time trying to prove like the 1% of doubt that we have because <laughs> we can get 99% into like, okay, we're all right. And then there's that 1% that we just ruminate on over and over and over and over. Um, so with that said, um, again, not wanting to focus on the themes, but you know, the, the fear of, uh, uh, the fear of the suicidal thoughts and the fear of what if I snap and I do die by suicide at my own hands, you know, this is a very common theme and it is a treatable theme. So, it, you know, looking at it just like other violent intrusive thoughts and looking um, into what exposure response prevention therapy, acceptance commitment therapy with ERP as well, um, what these therapies can bring to you. Um, if you are in need of a therapist referral, 
worldwide. Um, I can help connect you to therapists here in the States that can do teletherapy, um, or if there are any in your country, there are also charities out there that can help, especially in the UK. You've got UK um, Action, I mean OCD Action and OCD UK. Um, so being able to utilize whatever resources that you have to be able to look forward and look toward getting help. A couple other resources that I want to throw out there. Jonathan Grayson has Freedom from Obsessive Compulsive Disorder Workbook. Um, Jonathan Abramowitz has Getting Over OCD. These are wonderful workbooks uh, that you can start. If, if therapy is not in the cards for you right now, maybe starting with those workbooks to be able to start looking at how you can start working toward exposing yourself and doing some ex response prevention under these workbooks, which were written by OCD experts. They could help for sure. Um, and then, you know, just looking up in your country or in your state or wherever you are, any sort of um, OCD support groups or OCD foundations that might be able to help. So with that said, fear of suicidal thoughts and fear of what if I snap um, and I hurt myself or I attempt suicide. This is a very common theme. Make sure that when you are getting help for this, you are looking for an OCD therapist that can help and understand the difference between anxiety um, disorders and OCD versus not understanding that this isn't just fear-based. Um, if you need to contact me for a referral consultation or to do peer support, you can find me at chrissyhodges.com or you can email me at ocd.chrissie at gmail.com. So thank you for being here. I hope that this was helpful um, to help you feel less alone in this. Um, recovery is possible. There is hope and you are not alone in this thing.